have an interesting video. Let's get right into it. My last two videos had to do with a Cosa Nostra rule, which is you are not to go with another member's wife or girl. Obviously, Mikey knows Mancuso didn't believe in following that rule as he began dating the ex-wife of Lucchese member Joey Lebrano. The story I'm about to tell has to do with Lebrano, but I'll get to that later. Years ago, Anthony Guzzo introduced me to a guy named John Donatio. He had been in the same prison with Anthony's brother Vito, and at the time he was getting friendly with Anthony as well. Anthony told me that John was originally a Lucchese associate, but he had gotten some trouble. Supposedly, he was around Richie DeLuca, who before he passed away was a Lucchese captain, but I don't believe he was a captain at the time John was around him. John lived in Westchester and was involved in the produce business, and according to Anthony, while in prison, he would tell guys that he was straightened out. And on a call that was recorded in his case, he was overheard telling a guy, you're talking to a wise guy, when in fact, he was just an associate. To be perfectly clear, a guy can't perpetrate to be a member. In fact, it could get him killed. Naturally, when the Lucchese family found out what he was doing, they wanted nothing to do with him. And around the same time that he was having all this trouble, he was in a restaurant with his father. And at some point, Joey Lebrano walked up to him and stabbed him. As usual, I believe it was over a woman. Anthony explained that John was persona non grata with the Lucchese family, and he believed John was trying to get close to him for protection. But when it came to Anthony, I only believe so much of what he said. In the summer of 2017, I attended a birthday party for Lenny Di Maria. It was held in a Long Island restaurant, but what surprised me the most was one of the guys at the table was John Donatio. Months later, I was at a Lucchese Christmas party in Bella Notte in Belmont, Long Island. And Lenny was invited, and I believe he came with Blaze Carrazzo. At some point during the night, Lenny pulled me to the side. He said he was looking to put this John Donatio up, which means propose him for membership. And he wanted to ask me if I knew anything about him. He said he noticed at his birthday dinner that John was talking with me. I explained to Lenny I only heard about the incident he had with Lebrano. But Lenny waved his hand and said that was taken care of, meaning most likely he spoke with Lebrano. I told him other than that, I didn't hear anything else, which wasn't true. Remember, Anthony told me that he was perpetrating to be a wise guy. But I was taught when a guy's getting proposed not to bring things like that up. Let somebody else say it. I ended the conversation by telling Lenny that John's always been a gentleman in my company. He thanked me and said he appreciated that I spoke well about him. So most likely by now, Lenny straightened him out. In that life, it's all about who you know. In John's case, one family chased him and he was even stabbed. And now here was a Gambino captain looking to propose him. So a guy like Lenny seen something good in John Donatio. Years ago, when I was an associate, someone asked me to take a ride to the Bronx. We had been in a restaurant eating dinner, and it was about 1 o'clock in the morning. So by the time we drove to the Pelham Manor section of the Bronx, it was now 2 o'clock in the morning. We were sitting around in a car, and then a motorcycle pulled up. My friend got out of the car and walked over to the guy on the bike and started talking to him. He got off of it, he lifted his visor up, but he never took his helmet off. They spoke for about 20 minutes, and then my friend got back in the car and we left. After a while, he asked if I knew who that was, and I said to him, how could I know who it is? He had a helmet on. He laughed and said, that was Barney. The Genovese family is known by Cosa Nostra members as the West Side, and that was because Chin Giganti's club was located on Sullivan Street, which is the West Side of Manhattan. The West Side is a family that prefers not showing their hand. In any other family, it's widely known who represents the administration. But the West Side has been playing three-card Monty for years. Their goal has always been one aimed at insulation, and above all, hiding the boss. This was mainly done to confuse law enforcement, and it proved to be very successful for a number of years. If you think about it, they're a family that traces back to Lucky Luciano. Throughout the family's history, they put in place a series of street bosses, which is an acting position. The difference between an acting boss and a typical family versus the Genovese street boss is the acting boss is usually put in place because the true boss is for some reason incapacitated or in most cases in prison. Conversely, the Genovese family fills that position to create confusion. As I've mentioned, a classic example of this is Fat Tony Salerno, a West Side street boss. A move that not only confused the other families, but for years, law enforcement as well. By now, everyone knows it was Chin Giganti who was the actual boss. Prior to Chin being indicted on the window case, the West Side implemented another street boss position. But this time, it was a young guy that they've been grooming, and that was Barney Belomo. He had a good run up until the mid-90s when he was indicted on a racketeering case. He eventually took a plea in exchange for a 10-year sentence. However, 
While in prison, he was hit with additional indictments. And that pushed his release date back only a few years. I use the word only because it could have been decades. Barney was released on December 1st, 2008. At that time, the West Side not only had a street boss, but a series of panels, which consisted of high-ranking members running the family. By this time, Chin, the official boss, had died in prison three years earlier. Even with all the West Side panels in place, Barney was in the shadows doing what he was groomed to do, making decisions. And just like the bathrobe-wearing boss before him, his word was the final one. Although he emulated Chin's wisdom to lead, Barney, being college-educated, possessed both book smarts and street smarts. As the official boss of the West Side, Barney's relied on his panels and hand-picked street bosses to insulate himself. In fact, until recently, he managed not to have pictures of himself in circulation. He doesn't parade out in public in a bathrobe or play the crazy act. When out in public, he prefers jeans and sneakers, and most of the times a t-shirt, weather permitting. For the most part, he tries to stay low-key and fly under the radar, and remains an elusive boss. That is, until now. Up to a certain time, Barney was married with four kids. But lately, he's been living a single life. Many years ago, when he was inducted into that Ivy League family, Barney was explained the rules of Cosa Nostra. And one of those rules was, he is not permitted to go with another member's wife or girl. It's been brought to my attention that Barney took a cue from Mikey Nose by dating another Joey Lebrano ex. And pushing that envelope even further, he's not only dating the woman, but he's cohabitating with her. The woman moved in with him. I'll end with this. Since two out of the five bosses have been with his exes, Lebrano has to meet three more women to cover the remaining families. I hope you enjoyed this latest news. Please remember to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you could do that as well. And if you think friends and family might have an interest in this video, please share it and thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you on the next one. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.